Hi everyone, my name is Liz Heyman. I'm a senior transportation planner with Public Works and I'm joined here by my colleague. My name is Terry Duran, I'm an associate transportation planner with Public Works. And both of us thank you for tuning into this recorded presentation for the Bryant Avenue Reconstruction Project. Uh, in this presentation, we're going to be going over some project background, project goals, our engagement to date. Uh, we'll introduce some new concept designs for both Bryant Avenue South and Lindale Avenue South from Lake Street to 50th. Uh, and we'll go over next steps and how you can participate going forward. Uh, so a note about communication uh, continually as uh, throughout the, we've been doing through this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, all project communication um, is going to continue to be virtual or over to the phone. Um, however, we are going to take a new approach to emails. Um, I'll say that given some COVID related staffing challenges over the last couple months, um, we became overwhelmed with the number of emails we've received from stakeholders and we did a poor job responding to them in a timely manner. So if you're out there and you've been waiting for a response and are frustrated by that, uh, I apologize. Um, we, we just couldn't keep up. Um, so due to that, to try and, um, you know, address that issue, we're going to be taking a new approach where we'll be asking folks to send in comments via emails. We have read all your emails. We've taken that feedback, incorporated it into some of the changes and the materials we have for you today. So if you're interested in still sending us comments via email, that's fantastic. Um, if you're looking for specific answers and responses, we do ask that you call us. Um, and we'll, we'll have that in the email response going forward. Um, we're gonna be setting office hours. So my office hours are from two to 3 p.m. on Monday. You can see my phone number there. Um, Trey will have office hours on one to 2 p.m. on Fridays. It'll be through the end of the project until it goes to city council layout review. Um, please give us a call. We'll be available during those times. Uh, we'll give you a call back if you get a busy signal um, and we'll be able to just get answers to you much, much faster um, than we were able to do in this last previous round uh, via email. The other thing we wanted to note is uh, the city is facing two uh, dual you know, crises. Um, the city of Minneapolis has declared racism a public health emergency within the city of Minneapolis. Um, in this just really tough time for our city, we appreciate um, you taking the time uh, to join us to talk about um, street redesign. I'll say that at Public Works, we, um, we talk a lot about protecting our most vulnerable street users, um, but we also know based on our data that our residents who are um, Black, Indigenous, and people of color don't experience street safety um, and, and, and are vulnerable street users as well. They don't experience street safety in the same way as our white residents. Um, so as a white resident of Minneapolis, I look forward to the challenging, difficult, and necessary uh, conversations to come um, as we work together to building a more uh, equitable and racially just city. Thanks, Liz. Um, so now um, I will go on and kind of go over uh, a bit of the project background and the material that we presented on um, in previous open houses and go over um, the policy and uh, the process of conceptual design. So what is the Bryant Avenue South Reconstruction Project? Um, it is a reconstruction of Bryant Avenue South from Lake Street to 50th Street. And the reconstruction project um, is uh, undertaking uh, where the city uh, has an opportunity or the, and stakeholders and uh, residents have an opportunity to reimagine our right of way. And our right of way on, on Bryant um, is uh, back of sidewalk to back of sidewalk, uh, which is about 60 feet um, for most of the corridor. We know in some places that that 60 feet is constrained by um, encroachments, uh, which are like retaining walls, trees, or fences. And so the city of Minneapolis uh, will uh, do it uh, best to work within our effective right of way, um, avoiding some of those encroachments. So uh, why are we reconstructing? Bryan Avenue South is a 60 year old uh, street. Um, it is um, experiencing some pavement degradation um, over the years due to its, uh, the nature of the, the, the age of the street. Um, and we also know that 60 years ago when this street um, was, was, was built, um, that it operated in um, um, fall uses from um, a different time period. And uh, as Bryant operates now, there are multiple modes along Bryant. We have a bicycle facility along Bryant. We have parking lanes and business nodes. And as we undertake this reconstruction, um, we seek to build the street, um, revision um, the street for what it may, um, the uses it may accommodate in the future. So as far as project schedule, um, starting off last year, um, in spring, we had a kickoff open house um, where we started the goals and visioning for the project. 
Um, and then we had our second open house in December of last year. Uh, we were going to do uh, our draft concept design. Um, and all of that and where we are now is what we would call the concept design process. Um, and then as we move into 2021 and later on in this year, um, we'll approach detailed engineering design where um, we would presumably have a city adopted uh, concept layout for the corridor. And then on into 2022 and 2023, this project is planned to be um, phased uh, through its reconstruction or construction. Um, and uh, meaning it will be constructed over, over two years. Um, we don't know what half of the corridor will be uh, constructed first. That's normally details that are um, figured out during detailed engineering design, as I mentioned, after there is a council approved layout. A little bit more on concept design. Um, it's essentially establishing, uh, establishing the basic elements of the street. Um, what we um, will be including um, as we move forward with uh, uh, concept design in the future. And so concept design is a, is a combination of city policy, technical analysis, and stakeholder feedback. Um, city policy, I'll kind of test to put on the next slide. Um, our technical analysis is all our bicycle counts, um, our parking counts, um, our other modal, modal counts along the corridor, um, some speed information that we've, we've collected, as well as uh, uh, the, the number of uh, it, our average annual daily traffic or the number of cars traveling along the corridor. And we combine that uh, with uh, city policy and our stakeholder feedback to get a concept design. A little bit more on uh, the city uh, policy. Um, I'll kind of briefly speak on each of these. Um, city of Minneapolis has its complete streets policy, which tells us to design for vulnerable road users, uh, most primarily. Um, there also is the street design guide, which uh, informs uh, project managers on how to undertake uh, uh, design for uh, future reconstruction projects. Um, there's also the 20 year street funding plan, uh, which is the city's uh, policy document um, or an ordinance to inform how we select streets to be included in our um, six-year capital improvement program. There's the Americans with, uh, there's Americans with Disabilities uh, Transition Plan, uh, which is essentially as a plan to eliminate um, all barriers to across the city to walking and rolling. The city also has its uh, Declaration of Climate Emergency, uh, which um, uh, tells us when we under undertake reconstruction projects of this scope that we ensure that they do not uh, have an undue impact on the environment. Um, and then there's the Transition Action Plan and the Vision Zero uh, Action Plan. The Transition Action Plan is a 10-year plan that uh, guides how the city will build out its modal networks. Um, and then the Vision Zero Action Plan is the city's uh, plan to eliminate all severe and fatal traffic crashes on city, city streets by 2027. So a bit more on some of the project goals that are informed by city policy. Um, for the Bryant project, we have to, we, one of our goals uh, are to improve pedestrian safety and access and comfort. Um, create an all ages, all abilities bicycle connection in the area. Um, this is language, uh, all ages, all abilities bicycle connection. That's language that's um, enumerated in the uh, action plan, which essentially means uh, creating a bicycle facility that's comfortable for a wider range of cyclists, not just those who are uh, more comfortable uh, riding in the street and under duress, but uh, comfortable for those who um, need a, a calmer or a wider facility. Um, we also have a goal to support existing and future transit service in the area, and Liz will talk more about that um, as it goes over the proposal um, for Lindale Avenue South. Um, and then there's the green use green infrastructure and collect uh, the, the goal to use green infrastructure and collect and treat stormwater runoff. This is a rather new goal um, that um, Public Works is including on the forefront of, uh, of, of projects um, uh, reconstruction or concept design. Um, and then there's also accommodate business deliveries and customer access. And we know along Bryant, we have a number of business nodes, and they also have their uh, their needs um, um, at those intersections and, and along Bryant. And we want to ensure that we're um, accommodating those on the forefront of, of our, of our um, uh, conceptual design process. So a bit more on our phases of engagement. As I mentioned earlier, last year we had a kickoff, uh, which was a project introduction and um, kind of goal setting for how we'll uh, move forward with the reconstruction. Um, and then as we transition from round one to round two, um, where we um, put out our uh, draft, draft concept, the conceptual design, um, showing a two-way on Bryant and the proposal to move transit over to Lindale. 
Uh, then after round two and where we are now, it is round three, where we refine that concept design, uh, concept design and we'll seek to um, further engage with the community and um, eventually reach a point where we would go to round four, where we would have a uh, recommended uh, public work uh, conceptual design for the corridor. Uh, following that, um, seeking council approval of the conceptual design. So who we've talked to um, over the course of round one and round two um, are more than 40, 40 businesses along the corridor, a uh, number of neighborhood groups, and uh, corridor residents. Uh, we understand that during this global pandemic, um, it's uh, very, very challenging to, uh, to reach out to everyone along the corridor, uh, both Bryant and Lindell. And so we've offered a number of virtual, virtual open houses, uh, with question and answer sessions for residents and stakeholders to interact with uh, project managers, um, virtual group discussions, which we hosted six of these in January, and we will continue to host these um, uh, for round three as well. Uh, we've offered uh, project feedback maps where um, in round one, we allowed, um, it enabled folks to uh, see the corridor of Bryant and kind of click and select and put in their comments uh, relating to uh, a couple subject subject areas. Um, and we also have offered um, two online surveys, and we um, also have an online survey posted on the website um, today for folks to review the conceptual designs, but also uh, into that survey that uh, relates to those. Um, and as Liz mentioned, we also are offering uh, discussion hours and have offered those in the past, as well as our project phone calls and emails that we will continue to um, try our best to respond to. And I say that to say uh, we want to continue all these conversations as we um, um, continue through uh, round three of engagement. So what we heard in round run, uh, where we have our corridor visioning and project goals, we understand that uh, Bryan Avenue South is a constrained corridor. It has a number of modes uh, operating on the corner. We have corridor, we have transit, we have bikes, we have pedestrians um, and vehicles all operating on this very constrained corridor. Um, we also heard that uh, we want to um, stakeholders want to prioritize vulnerable street uh, and sidewalk users. Um, Bryant doesn't have uh, any boulevards, and um, it's in, in some places uh, very, very uncomfortable to uh, traverse the corridor by walking and rolling. We've also heard a need to de-emphasize the space allocated to vehicles. Um, Bryant has two travel lanes and two parking lanes, um, um, but also add in greening, um, kind of speaking more to um, that kind of comfortability of the pedestrian. Um, and we've also, we've also heard uh, that um, there's a need to maintain business, no parking. We understand that uh, businesses have a need um, for uh, deliveries and other uh, types of operations um, that conducive to their continued uh, operation. Um, but I also want to highlight two common stakeholder priorities that weren't represented uh, as the goals, and those were to maintain uh, vehicle access uh, along the corridor and maintain on street parking. So after hearing uh, what uh, we heard back um, in round one, what we did, um, kicking off in uh, round two, uh, where we presented the, the draft concept, was evaluate the, the concepts based on common stakeholder priorities, those uh, priorities that I, I mentioned earlier about maintaining um, vehicle access and maintaining on-street parking. We evaluated the bike facility and the ped bike conflicts. We heard um, from stakeholders that um, the, the, there's concern around the potential for uh, 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 conflicts uh, with bikes and pedestrians on uh, the along the off the curb, um, where we had a uh, off street trail and a shared use trail, in the concept we presented in December, um, and then we also um, presented um, our draft concept what, that reflected the city's best foot forward um, by reinforcing city policy and uh, project goals. Um, and so, as we kicked off round two and, and transitioned into round, round three, uh, what we heard was an overall need to better balance between on-street parking, bicycle facilities, and just overall corridor design. As I mentioned earlier, Bryant is a constrained corridor, and um, there's a need to prioritize uh, certain modes along that corridor. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, Liz will talk more about this um, as, we, as it relates to the proposal to move transit from Bryant to Lindell. Um, but we also heard, and this is one of the uh, more important uh, 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 feedback, um, uh, 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 more one of the uh, most important, I, I would say one of the more important feedback tidbits was uh, the feedback we received was had a strong desire for alternate option along Bryant Avenue South. 
Um, and Liz will talk more about that as we um, as we pre present um, the concept for a one way and long client. Um, so also what we heard in round two, um, as I mentioned, um, included the proposal to move transit from Bryant to Lindale. Um, overall, there's a mixed feedback regarding moving uh, transit. Um, some supported the proposal to move transit, um, but there's also some desire to keep transit service on Bryant. Um, some of the concerns with moving transit to Lindale um, was the uh, impact to car travel and vehicle delay um, the, that that concept uh, could present. Um, there's also a lack of specificity um, with the proposal, and we will um, kind of go in more in depth on that in this presentation. Um, but also, um, uh, we heard that there is a strong, well, there's, there's significant difficulty of pedestrian crossings along Lindale, and um, there's a, we'll be kind of addressing that um, in the, the, the concept that we have for you today. So a little bit more on the one race street option and the feedback uh, that we heard about applying a, a, a different alternative along Bryant. Um, as you can see here, um, in our round two survey, we presented the question, um, what do uh, stakeholders and residents feel about uh, a one way on Bryant? Um, um, there's some concern about uh, the, the speed of car traffic that uh, would presumably travel on this one way. Um, and there was also um, just some uncertainty about what the one way design um, would mean for um, um, pedestrians, bicyclists, and, and cars. And so one of the, 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 the things we, we, we gathered from not only this survey, but from the um, uh, open houses and emails and just uh, discussions we've had, had with residents and stakeholders is that um, there's, there's enough um, interest in, 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 in presenting uh, the one-way concept that we'd um, like to explore further um, as far as uh, presenting a concept design. So as I mentioned, Liz will kind of talk a little bit more on that in just a moment. Thanks, Trey. So um, we, you know, as Trey said, we, we took in all our stakeholder feedback. We reviewed emails, comments through both rounds of engagement, uh, lots of conversations with folks about what they're looking to see on Lindale. And we reviewed all that information uh, and our concept plans. Um, and we went back to our concept evaluation framework um, to double check everything. And um, for those of you, you know, been following along from the beginning, we had three big main concepts that we had looked at. First one was the squeeze it in, where we tried to keep transit, bicycle, infrastructure, cars, pedestrians, everything um, all together on Bryant. Um, you can see that it didn't score very well when we evaluated it based on some of these red and yellow dots all the way up and down here. The second option was looking at bicycles on Bryant, which in the last round, you know, is um, was our draft proposal that we brought out in detail. Um, and, and then based on the stakeholder feedback, as Trey said, um, we, we worked out in, in detail a one-way option and evaluated that as well. And you can see here that that starts um, to rise to the top when you start um, evaluated against project goals and stakeholder priorities. Uh, and then lastly, we looked at um, an option for transit on Bryant, where we'd keep transit on Bryant um, and move um, a bicycle facility to an adjacent street. Um, when we reviewed our evaluation we and, and stakeholder feedback, um, we're still feeling strongly that um, the Bicycles on Bryant is the best option to meet project goals and stakeholder priorities. Um, and after our technical evaluation of the one-way option, Public Works draft proposal um, now looks to support uh, the one-way option on Bryant as the best way to balance all these needs. Um, next slide, please, Trey. Uh, so um, that's what we're here um, in the second half of this presentation. Uh, we'll go through the details of both um, the Bryant Avenue options, the two options, which are two way for um, cars and a, uh, versus a one way for cars, and then um, provide some more detail and information on the concept for Lindale. So first for the details on the tra draft transit proposal on Lindale, uh, as Trey mentioned, folks were looking for much more specificity. Uh, we agreed with that. Um, if you check out our project website, you can see um, full details for what we're proposing um, on Lindale. Um, we're proposing to, to move six routes, uh, three local and three limited stop routes from Bryant to Lindale. Um, that uh, when we're proposing a um, combination of 15 new stops, both 
uh, pull out and in lane. Uh, and when we move things over to Lindale, um, we do get more room for transit amenities, um, such as bus shelters and more room for folks to wait um, while they're waiting for the bus. Uh, the one thing to note here is that we are uh, proposing to keep the Route 23 and the Route 114 on Bryant to serve uh, Walker Methodist front door. Uh, and I can talk a little bit more about that, about how that impacts our Bryant proposals. Uh, but first kind of staying on Lindale here, uh, first thing to note is that there are minimal changes to typical travel times on Lindale. We had a lot of questions about congestion and what that would mean, um, but uh, based on our traffic modeling and the existing data that we have, um, we believe that transit times and travel times uh, for um, you know, a personal vehicle from 50th to Lake Street will change very minimally under this, pro under this proposal. And um, you can see here that you know we this are existing travel times today um, in the PM peak, so that's the you know evening rush hour. It's the busiest time in this corridor. Um, and then we modeled out um, what we what transit would look like and what traffic would look like on Lindale in the year 2040. So that means we take um, proposed land uses, um, put them into our modeling software run it with existing and projected uh, traffic counts based on you know, both land uses. Um, and, and here are our results. So we both modeled it with without transit and with transit in this corridor. Uh, and you can see that, yes, um, based on our assumptions, we put in fairly conservative assumptions based on this corridor. Um, yes, travel times will go up based on existing um, when you compare them to existing. But when um, you compare with and without transit, the typical travel time in this corridor is only going to see a difference of 15 to 16 seconds. Um, I'm not going to tell you that if you end up behind uh, a bus under this proposal, that your travel time may be longer as you wait for people to get on and off. But a, a typical travel time uh, for someone traveling the full length of this corridor, you're just not going to see that much difference under this proposal. The other thing we wanted to highlight is that under the proposal, there are very minimal changes to the curb line. Um, so you can see in this picture on the left what a typical transit stop um, will look like under this proposal. Um, the, the, at most of these locations, the only change that we're doing is adding these small pieces of sidewalk to connect back into the typical sidewalk there. So we're not changing or doing a lot of work to the curb. So when you go to our website, you check out the Lindale concept. If you see something that looks like um, the intersection on the right, where you just have a couple of little pieces of orange sidewalk, that is the extent of the changes that we're proposing um, with this project. So there are a couple of locations where we're proposing um, larger changes. Uh, and at three locations, we're proposing um, pedestrian median um, at 45th, 41st and 37th. Uh, and this was in direct response to the feedback we heard about, you know, um, concerns of pedestrians crossing Lindale, especially at intersections um, that don't have a traffic signal. So all of these three locations here, um, they don't have traffic signals, but we're also proposing a transit stop at these locations. Um, so to help people cross uh, more safely, uh, we are proposing a closed median. So you can see an example of what that looks like um, on the right hand side. Um, what this means is that, you know, pedestrians, it's the highest level of protection for pedestrians um, for you know, this type of design to have it closed. Um, but it also means is that um, traffic, traffic movements at these intersections are, are limited. So it, this is a right in, right out design. So folks no longer will be able to go directly across Lindale at these locations, nor would they be able to make left turns. Um, however, based on our data that we have, uh, the movements at these intersections, first of all, are already low to begin with for the entire intersection. Um, and the, um, the straight through and the left turn movements represent about two to 3% um, of, of entire traffic movements at this intersection. So we believe that these impacts will be fairly minimal, um, you know, but if you live here, this will be a change. The other location that has uh, you know, the most or more intense improvements uh, would be changes to 50th and Lindale. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you know are listening, 50th and Lindale is a fairly tight intersection. 
um, to enable us to get buses through here um, on to 50th and on to Lindale, we do have to make some curb line changes. So you can see in the beige is where we'd proposing making um, changes to the curb line. Um, but the biggest change that folks would notice would be on the um, northeast corner where we have to pull the curb back um, to make room for a bus stop on that corner. Uh, all the other corners are, are going to look fairly similar. We're going to maintain sidewalk widths, um, and but but the the changes that people will notice will be on that corner here. And if we could go to the next slide, please. Um, taking a look at uh, you know a picture of this existing conditions from Google Street View, um, the changes folks will notice is that uh, this median would need to be removed, and we'd need to pull the bus stop uh, the curb back here, which will have an impact to um, uh, one to two mature trees, uh, and we'd have to move this signal back to make room for this. So those that the 50th and Lindale intersection is the intersection where we'd see the most changes to curb lines on Lindale. The other thing to note is that this project is proposing a mix of pullout and in lane stops um, to uh, make this proposal work. So a pullout stop is a stop where the bus is traveling down the street and then actually pulls out of the lane of traffic um, to let people on and off. An in lane stop is where the bus stops in the lane of travel um, so people can get on and off the bus and the bus just remains there and folks driving behind will have to wait until the bus moves. Um, we are proposing in lane stops at seven intersections, um, all of those intersections being south of 40th. Uh, you can take a look at um, our detailed plans to see exactly where those are. Um, but again, you know, our traffic modeling shows that this uh, type of design will work and has minimal impacts to a typical travel time in this corridor. Um, the last thing to note is about how this proposal supports existing and future transit on Lindale. Um, so the Lindale Avenue corridor is um, a candidate for arterial bus rapid transit uh, implementation prior to 2040. So it's a midterm priority now for uh, Metro Transit. And um, this is one of the driving factors for why we're uh, proposing to move transit from Bryant to Lindale, um, because we know that as we set curb lines on Bryant for the next 50 years, um, it's imperative that we understand how we're going to have a transit supportive corridor uh, for somewhere in the Southwest Minneapolis area and um, Lindale with its wider right of way uh, and since it doesn't have a bicycle facility, makes it easier um, to plan for this transit upgrade um, as, a, as Metro Transit continues to roll out and build out their arterial bus rapid transit uh, network. So moving over to the Bryant Corridor, we're gonna introduce uh, just a high level look at our two options. Again, you can check out our website for the full details. So those two options, are, as again, as I mentioned, are a one-way for vehicles versus an adjusted two-way for vehicles. So starting with our adjusted two-way concept. So back in December, we brought out a two-way concept. Um, we, we still have that on the table today. Um, this concept is, is fairly similar to what we brought out previously. So um, it includes you know, two lanes for vehicle traffic, South of 40th, it includes a shared use path, which you can see on this top um, block example here. Um, so that means that bicyclists and pedestrians share the same space. Um, and then north of 40th, uh, where we have higher existing bicycle and pedestrian counts and expect those to remain high, we split out um, our trail from our pedestrian space. Obviously that has the trade-off when we um, put in parking at these locations that you just don't get a lot of green space um, out of this option, nor can you fit in um, a, a large amount of parking when you're trying to prioritize that green space. But the biggest change that you see is that we've added 14 total parking spaces back in. Um, specifically wanted to note that we've added them in on, at the blocks that had no parking. We heard um, fairly strongly that people um, were not interested in having blocks uh, with no parking whatsoever. Um, but when we you know, reviewed our project goals, stakeholder priorities, we do think um, that the two-way option as it was drawn up originally was pretty close and needed to support um, all of those goals and priorities and balance them in a way that um, you know didn't take away from what we were trying to do on this corridor. So 
not a lot of changes, um, but some to respond uh, to the feedback that we heard on this design. Um, the one thing uh, different with transit on this adjusted two-way concept is that we are recommending um, keeping the Route 23 and the Route 114 to provide front door service to Walker Methodist. Um, so you'll see that in this proposal uh, as well in the adjusted two way as a change to look for uh, between the blocks of 38th and 36th. Now to go to the one way. So, um, you know, heard a lot of feedback as Trey mentioned, uh, this option um, is our, um, our take at trying to rebalance in a different way to try and meet project goals, stakeholder priorities, um, and, and reimagine our right of way to, to balance those to the best of our ability. Um, so this one way cop set does have a set of opportunities and challenges, just like every concept at public works. Um, but opportunities for this one is that, um, we're able to provide separate space for bicyclists and pedestrians throughout this whole corridor. So the shared use path is removed in this option. Um, we're able to provide, um, large spaces, uh, for green infrastructure and get into some of those numbers of what the difference looks like. And we're able to provide more parking um, with this option. The challenges are going to be side street traffic impacts. Uh, and I can talk about those in more detail um, here. But um, first, kind of the thing to note is that this is proposal includes a converging one-way design. So we're proposing that Bryant would be one way for vehicles northbound from 50th to 46th, and then southbound from Lake to 46th. Two big reasons why we're proposing um, this converging one-way design. If we go to the next slide, please. So the first is that um, there's an existing traffic pattern um, down by 50th and, um, and Bryant that has uh, Aldrich as a converging one-way design that exists already. Um, and having this be northbound allows us to, you know, keep that traffic pattern that helps with traffic circulation and um, discourages cut through traffic in the neighborhood. Um, so keeping Bryant northbound here um, helps us maintain that traffic pattern. Uh, the other thing that this helps us with is on the right hand side here, you can see a picture out in front of Clara Barton School. So the kids getting um, on and off the bus um, with a southbound uh, one way in this area, we're able to make sure that the bus door stays on the right hand side, stays right next to the sidewalk. So we don't have kids uh, getting off the bus and having to you know, cross behind the, the bus or cross the street. So a southbound was really critical um, to keep that loading pattern in front of Clara Barton. Um, so the two big reasons uh, why we're proposing that converging one way um, in this concept. Um, looking at the two typical cross sections that you'll see if you hop onto our website, take a look at those plans. Um, the first typical is, is you can see at the top is a um, two way bicycle trail plus a sidewalk and then two sided parking. Um, so again, we can fit in more parking here. So you can see, you know, two parking lanes and a singular through lane with pretty healthy boulevards that um, support tree growth on the typical, um, section on the bottom, you'll see that we have a uh, one side of parking with a 12 foot through lane um, and, and very wide boulevards here. Um, more than typical, we got seven and a half foot boulevards. And then again, a separate space for bicyclists and pedestrians. So those are the two most common um, cross sections that you'll see when you take a look at the plans. So getting into more details on those uh, opportunities and challenges. As I mentioned, the big challenge um, with this one uh, will be that there are likely going to be side street traffic impacts to our residential streets. Um, however, we believe that these are gonna be fairly modest in nature based on our um, traffic modeling in this area. So, um, you know, when you remove a vehicle lane of traffic, um, we expect that traffic to go somewhere. Um, we expect to see an additional 20 to 35 vehicles per hour in the most, uh, you know, busiest times so of the peak hour, uh, afternoon rush hour. Um, so those, we expect that increase to happen on Kings Highway, Colfax, and Aldridge. Um, fairly modest increase, um, but you know, if you're if you're home during that hour, it, it could be something that that you notice that feels different on those side streets. 
Um, we also expect some of the traffic to move to Lindale. Uh, and we expect to see an additional 65 to 100 vehicles per hour under this um, proposal. However, given that Lindale has a range of about 14,000 to 10,000 vehicles um, per day, we don't expect that an additional 60 to 100, 65 to 100 trips would be something that people would, would be able to notice on Lindale. Back to the opportunities. So with this one-way concept, uh, as we mentioned, we do fully separate out uh, space for bicycle and pedestrians based on a lot of feedback we heard. So um, on the left, you'll see the multi-use path, not a part of our one-way design. Um, on the right side, you can see an example of what it would look like to have separate trail and sidewalk facility in this corridor. Um, and that is one of the big things that we gain um, with this one-way design. The next thing we gain is more opportunities to invest in green infrastructure on Bryan Avenue. Um, so um, you can see on the table that in our revised two-way design, uh, we have about 2.7 acres of green space. However, under the one-way design, um, we gain more than half an acre. And, and not only do we gain that half an acre, but we gain it in the locations where we need it most and where it's the highest opportunity. So for example, um, uh, you can see some of our previous work where we mapped out our biggest opportunity areas for green infrastructure on Bryant. Um, so this block between 32nd and 31st is the example I'll use if we could go to the next slide. So this is one of our opportunity areas and the difference here, um, you can see the two way at the top and the one way at the bottom. Um, and under the two way, we have about 7,300 square feet of um, green space, but with the one way, um, that bounces up to 9,700 ish. So almost uh, an increase of 2,500 square feet um, in green space in an opportunity area um, that needs it the most and allows us to um, make uh, the biggest and the investments that we need um, in green infrastructure in this corridor. Then the last um, thing that we gain here is the ability to put in more parking. Um, so you can see this example block, this is 46 through 45th. On our adjusted two-way um, revised design, um, we're able to squeeze in uh, 14 parking spaces. Um, and you, know, you can see it still, it means a shared use path. It means pretty narrow boulevards. Um, however, under the one way, um, we're able to uh, maintain boulevards that are wide enough to support tree growth. Um, but also have uh, parking on both sides for you know, more than half of the block. We can fit in 23 spots. Um, so it's a, a, a good way um, to balance the, the needs here in this corridor. Uh, another technical piece here, um, just like the two way, on the one way design, we're proposing to um, keep some front door transit service to Walker Methodist. Um, where we'll keep the Route 23 and the Route 14 for the blocks between um, 38th and 36th Street. And the way we're proposing to do this uh, is with a transit contraflow lane. So in these blocks, you'll see two lanes for traffic. Um, and uh, it means transit only can go northbound on these blocks. Um, and that transit also encompasses uh, Metro Mobility and some of the vans that um, the walker uses to transport um, their residents. Um, so we felt it was very important and able to, um, you know, keep again, uh, Metro Mobility loading with their door in the right direction um, at, at Walker Methodist. So residents don't have to cross the street um, to access their homes. Um, so just one uh, you know, technical thing to note as you're looking and you see, you know, two travel lanes in this location. Um, so a lot of details, much more. I really encourage people to check out the layouts. Um, but one thing you can do to kind of get a feel for the corridor, we've spray painted um, our proposed one-way con uh, concept, uh, typical cross-section out in the world at uh, 49th, 40th, and 42nd Street. So you can go see and kind of help, um, helps me visualize anyway, what this corridor might look like. Um, so I do encourage you uh, to go check that out as well as take a look at the website. And um, you know some notes on how you can participate going forward. Um, so we are rescheduling our virtual open house. Um, please sign up for email alerts to get the exact day we're working on when that can 
can happen. Uh, for those of you who have made it the whole way through this presentation with us, um, do note that we're gonna, it'll be a repeat uh, of this information, um, but there will be a Q&A um, via chat box um, at the end. You can also sign up for our small group conversations. We had those last time. Um, it's a, you know, an open conversation with staff uh, through video chat. Um, so you can sign up, there's a link here and you can see it on our project website. Please sign up for those to have those conversations. Um, and you can also provide us feedback uh, via our online survey, which is up on the website as well. So thanks for joining us. Uh, we look forward to continuing this conversation um, and hearing from, from you know, residents, stakeholders, um, business owners on um, how we can continue to balance the project goals and stakeholder priorities. Um, and looking forward to continuing that conversation. Thanks very much for listening.